PS3 emulation on the Steam Deck. It sounds like a pipe dream, but the experience has gotten a little better since we last made a video. So who wants more PS3 games? According to YouTube analytics, only about 12% of you guys subscribe to my channel. And here's to hoping this percentage number goes up. So if you like my content, please like, subscribe, share with your friends, join my Discord server, and also enable notifications. We set up RPCS3 with EmuDeck, a utility that configures emulators for you as well as installs emulators, setup controls, setup directories, all that good stuff. What this application doesn't do is download BIOSes and ROMs for you, so you'll still have to get those yourself. But if you want an easy configuration, EmuDeck is the way to go. There's also one other tweak that I would make to get rid of audio crackling. In audio, enable time stretching. 75 seems good enough. Also, caching PPU modules will take some time, depending on the size of the game. It may take some larger games hours to do it. And as you can see here, the mere act of compiling these PPU modules, just look how taxing it is on the Steam Deck. And it's to my understanding that you can't actually transfer these PPU modules from one PC to another. So you have to compile these on your Steam Deck. If you've got a big game, then you're gonna have to find something else to do in the meantime. Like, take a break. Now let's proceed with the one game that everyone wanted to see. Metal Gear Solid 4, Guns of the Patriots. You would not believe how long it took to build SPU cache and all of that other good stuff because, my god, it took like a few hours to do it for this massive game. It's like a 30 gig game too, so it's not a small PS3 game by any stretch of the imagination. So how does the seminal masterpiece run? Well, it runs like crap. The game itself is already restricted to 30 FPS, so there's no improvements there, but here's the real kicker. This is what happens when you try to make a new game without any saves. The game freezes. It doesn't work. Nada. Zilch. It doesn't do anything. So I tried rebooting it again and again and again, only to come to the same conclusion. MGS4 doesn't seem to work on Steam Deck, at least not in game mode. In desktop mode, I've seen other YouTubers run it, but it runs like crap. Like, seriously, it's horrible. It's a horrible experience. Sorry to have strung you guys along. Whatever it takes to stay out of sight, your gun is a last resort. It could just as easily kill you as save you. Press the attack button near the enemy to initiate close quarters combat. This is Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker HD Edition. Yes, it's a PS3 port of a PSP game. And you know, you know what? Yeah, you could just play the PSP version on PPSSPP, but you don't get a lot of cool features like, you know, the ability to aim with your right stick. It also runs at 60 FPS by default. And as you can see here, it's running at 60 FPS. I would imagine for the most part, it runs at 60 FPS, unless you're fighting one of the Vocaloid bosses. Yes, that's right. Most of the bosses have Vocaloid voices, so like, yeah, you know, just blew your mind. Next up is From Software's legendary Demon Souls, the game that made From Software the company it is today. It establishes many of the mechanics and conventions that all the Dark Souls games and Bloodborne and Elden Ring go by. But here's the question, is it really worth playing in 2022? Well, of course it is. Got a PS5? You could play the Demon Souls remake. But like, what if you wanted to play it portably? Well, um... It works, and boy does it work beautifully. 30 FPS, the way Miyazaki intended the game to be played. Or, you know, it might just be a technical limitation, whatever. Here's something you need to know about Demon Souls, or rather, Demon Souls on RPCS3. You can play through the tutorial area just fine, at least after you create yourself a new character. The issue then comes from when you try to load the game. So without any additional configuration, if you try to load up your character again, well, it looks like everything's working just fine, but then watch this. Ah, there you go. Nothing works. It's just one big black screen. Thankfully, there's a fix for this. It's this little option here called Right Color Buffers. You'll need this enabled to play Demon Souls properly. 
Thankfully, RPCS3 allows you to create custom configurations per game. So for the most part, you can just enable it for just Demon Souls. I'm not really sure what other games require that option, but I know Demon Souls does. And as you can see here, it looks like everything's loading just fine, and then everything does load just fine. It's real awesome. Now you've got Demon Souls on the go. Ninja Gaiden Sigma. All things considered, the game runs really well, and it doesn't use a whole lot of system resources, except for when it needs to uh, create new shaders. The GPU will spike every time it needs to create new shaders, and that's true for literally every game on the PS3, so like, you know, that's just kinda how it is. I should note that Ninja Gaiden Black is also available on the Xbox, though I have yet to test an Xbox emulator on the Steam Deck, so I might need to do that at some point. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we saved the best for last. Odin's Fair Leftershear. It's the only game that I've ever bought a physical collector's edition for, and it's amazing. I'm still more than pissed off that I lost my PS Vita. But hey, at least I can play this game portably again. This game runs extremely well. Like, you would be surprised how well it runs. Yeah, there is some frame spiking issues, as you can see there sometimes when you land hits or when you do new special attacks. It'll just randomly spike for whatever reason. I suspect that it might just be the game's hit stops. I implore you all to try this game out. Like, seriously, it's amazing. So do yourselves a favor and buy this game. Like, actually buy it right now. And like, if Vanillaware releases games on PC, I'm probably gonna quadruple dip. Because at the end of the day, I'm a shameless Vanillaware shill. It's been one heck of a journey trying to get this PS3 emulator to work and even more to get Demon Souls working, after, you know, some research. But my god, I still can't believe that it's running. This is also the part where I talk about battery consumption, and this is one major caveat, mostly because battery consumption is quite insane for a lot of the bigger games that you'd want to play. For big titles, you'll probably get at most two hours of battery life, a small price to pay for salvation. Of course, less power demanding games demand less power, and so you'll have a longer battery life playing those games. This is better than I could have hoped for. And who knows if they can bring more optimizations to the table. Only time will tell, I guess. 